Hey everyone, it's Daryl Lazar Service at your service. Today we're going to take an early look at how to use components of Microsoft Loop, that mysterious application that was announced at Microsoft Ignite. We saw a lot of marketing videos and a lot of talk about it. Did you know though that there's some pieces of Microsoft Loop that you can access today? That's right, what used to be called Live Components is going to be called Loop. And so this is available now in public preview and if you uh, have that enabled in your environment, then you'll be able to access some of these things and start to get an understanding of the vision of what Microsoft Loop will be. I'll leave a link in the description to show you where to find and enable that public preview, uh, but let's get right into it. Now, I've got a conversation here going with Matt Stafford. Um, it's a private chat. And down the bottom of the chat is where you might have seen in some earlier materials, this is where we can add live components. Well, that is what I'm going to call loops. And look, they are loops and loop components, but I'm going to simplify and call it loops because it really doesn't matter what we choose to start a loop within a private chat. Um, I can start off with a bulleted list. But what's happening in the background is it's creating a loop page, as we will know it um, later on. And we'll see where this page is created and um, how you can access it. So we have a, a loop uh, started, and we need to give this a title. So let's call this uh, December Content Plan. Okay, and um, it doesn't really matter, you know, that what we're adding to this, because we started with a bulleted list. But if we type a forward slash, we can start to add other loop components to this loop. And so this is going to uh, be available to, to use uh, when I share it with Matt. So I'm going to create a table, I begin to type the word table, and it narrows the list down. And we'll um, put in here the item, and assigned to, and notes. Okay, so this is a table. And I'll just start off by writing, let's explain the video, blog post, and a course. Okay, so we've put some content into this loop, and it's not available yet, but we want to try and get this off to a good start. Um, so I want to be able to send that off to Matt, and so we're in this chat now, and we can start to uh, collaborate on this. So it's, it's synced, and now it's within an embedded um, chat, and this is going to be live. And let's cut over now to Matt's experience of this. Just rejiggle these windows to show them side by side. So this is Matt running on a different computer, and uh, he's seen the chat, and uh, there it is. There's the loop right in the page. So we're, we're talking our way through the content, and... Um, he types an at symbol and he's going to assign the explainer video to me. And so we can drop in a couple of notes here about what this is about. We'll just write the uh, intro, the script, um, and then the call to action. Whereas I'm over here, I can start to see that appearing live as well. Um, I'm going to assign the blog post to Matt. And then I'll also I'll take the course. Right, so I'll outline those. So we're able to collaborate in real time, that's cool. And look, what, what's happened here is, because I've mentioned Matt within the loop, um, he's also got a notification. So if he wasn't looking at this, um, or maybe we're working on this loop later on, and we uh, mention someone, then they're going to get a notification here uh, to show that there it is, there's the loop. Great, so that's um, adding content. What I want to show you now is that we can access this loop within OneDrive. So to open up the loop, we can click the loop title at the top. And then we'll just bring this off to the side again so you can see this updating at the same time. And so this is the same loop. Now this is opened up as if it were an Office application, like if we'd visited Word and we were editing a word, word in the, the Office application, Office Online. Um, but you'll see that it's the same content, 
and if I begin to add some content over, let's just do that from teams actually, we'll add some additional points here, so we need to go talking points, uh, graphics, and so that's all updating live. So that's pretty cool, it means that we can work with these files while we're within the web browser, and that makes it a bit easier to, to see. Um, but where do these files live? So let's just make this a little bigger and see that while this is working in the Office application, this is a in a private chat. So any documents that we share within a private chat become shared within the um, Microsoft Teams chat files folder in your OneDrive. So you see all the different attempts that I've um, had with playing, playing, fun playing around with the application and, and trying things out. And so these are just files within your OneDrive. Now today they're Fluid files because it's based on the Fluid framework. I'm not sure what's going to happen here in terms of naming and what they'll look like. Uh, but for now, as you're starting to use Microsoft Loop components earlier, or rather I should say components of Microsoft Loop early, then um, you'll get used to seeing them as fluid files. And this is what I believe are going to be called loop pages because it is the container for all the different components and content that you put into that page. And as we see here, it's a file. So just like any file within OneDrive or SharePoint, uh, I can share that. So I'm going to use the usual sharing dialog and we're going to add Laura to this. And that way Laura has access to the loop. Just one more comment about loops uh, being within this folder. I think it's just because it's been created from a Teams chat. I expect that loop pages will be able to be stored anywhere in OneDrive or within SharePoint. Um, and that you know is all about where they can be accessed and collaborated from. I believe that Microsoft Loop, the desktop application, will be what brings it all together so that we, we can easily work on these files in one place. Now follow me on this one. If we can do this in a private chat, surely that means that we can add Loop to our current meetings. Now it is going to need people to be on the public preview to see this within Teams, but they can access the Fluid file or the Loop page if you send them the link as well. So let's set up a meeting, we'll add a loop to our meeting, and then we'll work on it together with three people. We'll start by creating a meeting and inviting our people to it. Get through this really quickly. Now we can't today add loop components or um, loop pages to a meet and invite, but we will eventually see the ability to add agendas here and um, it will be available as part of that meet and invite. But let's just send this off to begin with. And just give me a moment as we all join the meeting and we'll come in and have a look at that experience. Okay, we'll join the meeting. We've got Laura and Matt already joined, so let's quickly get that set up here. We'll turn off various different pieces of audio, and let's get into this meeting. So the three of us in the meeting, all good, right. So we're chatting away, and as some of us do, we do start to take notes within our chat within the meeting. Uh, but over here you can see we can add the loop components or the loop page. So let's do that. Let's start one up. We'll again just start off with a numbered list or something like that, maybe even just a paragraph. We give it a name. So this is uh, December content for channel. Send that component off. So it is going to be trying to fit within the, the thin meeting chat that we see here because we don't have the ability to, to make that larger at this stage. But at least we can add in some ideas uh, or for what that, that content might be for December. So that again could be the video on, um, let's say, Microsoft Mesh. Um, we'll also have... Uh, working 
from your mobile. So that's me adding content there. What does Matt see? Now Matt's over in chat as well. So opening up chat, he should be able to see that live updates there from Loop. Good. Okay, so he can see it all happening and he can also see me in there live. Now, Laura has joined from a web browser and public preview only runs within Microsoft Teams on your desktop. So we're going to need to share the link with her so that she can access the, the loop page from the Office application experience. So we'll cut over to here. We'll just bring that over to the screen so you can see what I mean. So this is Laura's experience. She's within her web browser. And actually, while well, she's in that chat, of course, she does see the link there. So that, of course, it's another way for her to open up the live component. So here we are opening that loop page. And Laura can add some content here too. So we'll say Matt. Okay, so that's Laura's contributions to the loop. Back over to our meeting. There it is. So our last thing we're going to cover off is working from our mobile to show you what it's like to access loops. And it was quite surprising to see this. Think about it though, that the loop pages that I'm creating are just files. So they're going to appear in my recently used files list. So let me wake up my phone and we'll take a look at that experience as we go. So we'll just refresh that. You should see, there we go, there's our December content plan. So it's in our recent files. And no surprises here. There we go. We can actually add content to this. In fact, I can tap that plus sign and I can add a agenda. Yep. And then type in this item. That item. So that was really surprising to see that, yes, even now I can experience Microsoft Loop or components of Microsoft Loop from a mobile. So that's all I've got. Uh, look, I know that it's a bit hacky, a bit, you know, trying to get in under the covers and show you how some of these things are all coming together. Microsoft Loop will be a fuller, richer, more coherent experience when it becomes an app that's available next year. But it's a good way to start to get used to some of these ways of working as we start to understand how Microsoft Loop might fit within our working environments. And in particular, if we can start to use the Loop pages and loops within our chats and within meetings, then we can start to lift our experience of collaboration and get prepared for Microsoft Loop when it's available. Now, if you're keen to see more of this kind of content and uh, watch me play, break, and uh, try and dig in under the covers to see how stuff works, then you know where to find me and you know what to do. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.